God is good all the time. Well, uh, we, I would like to remind you to fill out the connection cards. And in the back, there are also stuff that we ask if you could do, you could please do. And tomorrow, we, we are going to have a uh, with Sweet Corn for Compassion project beginning tomorrow. Begins tomorrow, we are asking pick, uh, pickers, please be at the farm at 6.45 a.m. Burgers here at church garage over there at 7.30. Please give us your name on the yellow card and turn in the offering plate. Visitors are also asked to fill out the information, if you could please. And we would like to thank all of you, youth and adult volunteer with, who came for the um, VBS, who helped out with the VBS. We had approximately 30 different children learning. You are treasured, which was a success, and we want to thank all of you who came to help. So now I will ask that you please enjoy the prelude as Marshall leads us. Thank you very much, Marcia. Let us please stand and join together as you are able in our call to worship and prayer this morning. Let your hearts be open to the Lord today. Let our spirits be ready to feel God's power and love. Come, let us praise the God of love. Let us bring our hearts to God as we pray. Lord. We come into your presence this morning with the busy schedules of summer activities crowding our lives. Our souls need to be fed. 
and yet we seem powerless to find nurture and feeding that will sustain us. Open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts this day to hear your words of hope and healing for us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us remain standing for our opening hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Sorry, I forgot to turn myself on. <laughs> well, Pastor Millie, this is going to be a little different than the first service, won't it? Yeah. I won't have any ghost children here or children that are invisible. I see some at the front end over here. Hi, guys. Glad to see you. But I'm going to talk, turn around and talk to each and every one of you, too, because you guys are all children at heart, right? So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about corn, corn today. Uh, I don't know about you. Tom, am I uh, being videoed, too, for Zoom? <gasps> Hi, Zoom. Hi, Zoom. Are you? Uh, are you, am I live or am I live? Now think about that for a second, okay? Uh, do you know what tomorrow is? Tomorrow's a fantastic day because we are going to be picking corn. And if you want to purchase some corn, that driveway right next to the church is going to be two-way for you to come and pick up some corn. All right? All uh, right. Anybody know the history of the corn project when it started? I do. 1974. Okay. So you have 74, 84, 94, 1004, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. How many years? 47. 47 years we've been doing the Compassion for Corn uh, project. The money raised is used uh, by the mission team to help with different mission projects in Macomb, also in the state of Illinois, also around the world. We've been funding some stuff in Haiti, Rocote Foundation in Haiti, and this fund helps uh, Haitian citizens many, many years, you know, uh, 
supplied them with base, their basic needs. They pay, we pay for children's uh, tuition, train and pay teachers, feed the children, you know, because they're hungry. And the Corner Compassion Money also helps fund the salvation, uh, food for the Salvation Army, uh, Loaves and Fishes, Western Illinois Regional Council, Samaritan Well, uh, ha Habitat for Humanity, Colchester Relief Fund, and we also uh, support the Haitian students that attend Western Illinois University. Plus, plus we sponsor two complete scholarships for Macomb area youth to attend summer camp. Bet you didn't know that. We do a lot. The project also raises somewhere around $3,000 each year uh, for about two and a half acres of corn planted at the church farm. And guess what? That equates to about $150,000. That's a lot of money. So, you know who started the first planning, don't you? Van Harris. Van Harris started, started this, and for years, Tim Sullivan planted the seed. And then the uh, Sweet Corn for Compassion Memorial started September 8th, and, uh, 2019. And if you look out there at the Sadler Memorial, you'll see stalks of corn uh, in their honor for Van, March, and Tim. And this year's profits are going to the scholarship fund. Okay, every time I do something, I always bring something with me. But uh, did you know that corn on the cob is considered a vegetable when it's on the cob and it's a grain when it's off the cob? Did you know that? I, I, I did some research and everything else. So uh, like I said, guys, I brought something with me. I always bring, oh, if this was smell division, you would love the smell that's going on right now. Who, what are you doing in here? This is people church, not poppy church. Uh, did ya? Uh, I did it just for you. Uh, okay. And then, this is what we're picking. Corn. Let's, let's take a look and see what the corn has to say for themselves right now. Ah, lowly worm. There's a lowly worm in there. If you didn't know who lowly worm is, ask one of the kids. They'll tell you what lowly worm is. And what do you use corn for? You can make canned corn. You can do corn flakes. You can do corn pop. Okay, or you can do corn chips. Now, let me tell you a little tidbit before I go and hand some stuff here. Uh, did you know that popcorn is considered a fruit? Did you know that? Because it comes from a seed and it comes from a flower of the plant. But did you know when you go to the show and you ask for popcorn with double butter, you know what you're eating? You're eating what is equivalent to bacon and eggs, a Big Mac, and a steak dinner for all the fat that you get from that. Oh. So, Starting, to, uh, starting tomorrow, right next door over here, for a measly little $4.50, you can bring, uh, you can have uh, 13 ears of corn. Now, it's not saying that the pickers can't count, but 13 is the Methodist dozen. It could be a baker's dozen. It could be Friday the 13th dozen and all that stuff, but you'll get 13 ears of corn. And uh, while you're doing that, too, if you miss eight, uh, one, that it might, yeah, 8 to 1. You could go over to Wesley Village from 3 to 6 and pick up some corn over there. Um, 
I always bring something with me just in case. I was up early this morning popping popcorn. My cat thought I was goofy. Okay, now here's here's some popcorn for you. Yeah, you want one? You want one too? I can fix you up too. I can fix you now. Are my in trouble? Oh, okay. Oh, good job. Okay. Uh, oh, that's okay. Uh, that's okay. Uh, if you spill some on the ground and the custodian or Andy asks you what happened, tell him Guido gave it to you, okay? Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. Let's end with a prayer. May the crop be bountiful and worm free. May the money raised benefit the most needy and do the most good. May the volunteers have a safe picking. And can I hear an amen? Amen. I'm sorry that I, I was here for the first service. Sorry that I can't stay for the, the whole second service. Nothing personal, Millie. Nothing personal, Millie. But I, but I got a ball game to go to in Mount Sterling, the 7th and 8th grade, 7th and 8-year-old, the 8th. Nine-year-old Little League is playing for the championship game. Okay. This is the time for us to pray together, and I would like us to remember the family of Todd Ricketts uh, in our prayers. Todd passed away yesterday. Uh, he used to be I uh, used to be part of this church, but the time of passing he was living in Peoria. Let us pray. Lord of glory, almighty Father, we thank you for this time that you have brought us together to worship you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. And we ask that your spirit will continue moving upon our hearts and minister to us according to the need in the name of Jesus. Lord, I rebuke all powers of darkness against us, and I ask that you reign and rule. This morning we pray, Lord, for our church we ask that you continue blessing us in ways that we will be able to reach out to others in times of need, as well as those who don't know you, so that they will be able to know you and that we'll be able to encourage one another in faith. I pray that, Lord, you bless the United Methodist in general that you bless us abundantly, that you help us, Lord, be at your work. I ask that your spirit will be upon our leaders or those who are going to represent us, Lord. I pray that your spirit will move, that they will be able to do your will. I pray for this country as your word said to pray for our leaders, I ask that you be with them and give them your wisdom so that they are able to lead this country according to your will. I pray for the nations as well right now. I pray for peace. And I pray for those who have lost loved ones that you will comfort them, that you watch over them, Lord. I pray for the, those who are not feeling well in present in here and those at home wherever they may be found I ask for that grace of healing to touch and heal them Lord thank you Lord for your words that you have given us to encourage us in our walk with you thank you Lord for being so faithful 
so loving, so merciful. Now, Lord, I ask that you hear our prayers as we lift our voices, saying the way your son, Jesus Christ, continued to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'll ask for the ashes to please come forward. Lord, I thank you for the time of giving. I ask that you bless what we are giving for your work to go forward. And I ask that you bless the source of providence. I ask that you heal our lands. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise and glory. Amen. Our reading from the Old Testament today is Psalm chapter 121, verses 1 through 3. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Let us stand and join together in our affirmation of faith this morning. We believe in God, the Creator Spirit, who moved upon the face of the deep at the beginning of creation, who created all that is, and who spoke through the prophets of old. We believe in Jesus Christ, into whom God's Spirit 
was poured in fullness and in power, that the whole creation might be restored and unified. And who promised that the Spirit would come and fill the faithful with power to witness to the mighty love of God? We wait on that Spirit today with longing hearts, seeking to be empowered to witness to God's love in Christ with fresh words and courageous actions of love and hope. Glory be to God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. We thank Kim for double duty. She was here to help out, to help me out as a liturgist. Now she's back again in the nursery. So we thank God for that. Our New Testament reading is from Ephesians, the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in you, in your hearts, through faith, 
that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with, with all the saints what is the width and the length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. We just completed five days of VBS last Friday under the leadership of Kim Woods and Jordan Rouse, who worked tirelessly for us to have a successful program. Our children had a good time. I tell you, I heard that one of our kids told his grandmother that uh, he didn't know what to do without a night of VBS. How wonderful is that? This is to tell you how much our kids enjoyed the time of worship, teaching crafts and games. I thank each one of you who took the time out of your busy schedules to help in this mission of Jesus. May God bless you. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for this time that you have given us of sharing, sharing your words. I ask that you use me as your instrument. I ask that your spirit will move upon your people that you speak to them. Lord, I pray this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, I want us to reflect on the goodness and the greatness of our God, our creator, and explore for a few minutes why the Apostle Paul exhorts or encourages us as well with these words. That God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Which is also our memory verse, but uh, I've, uh, I've included also verse 21 just to complete the doxology. So I'd ask if uh, Tom will have it on the screen, if we can say it together. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. I will use several, uh, several scripture references to help us understand why Paul said God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. As we look at the dimension of his ability, God's ability, I say ability because you don't put God in a box, you don't tell uh, abilities, I mean, he's God. All, everything is about him. In chapter 1, verse 1 of the book of Genesis, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God did not just stop there. You know the story. He said in verse 3, Let there be light, and there was light. In verse 11, God said, let the, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, 
and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. From the creation story, we learn that God spoke into existence the heavens and the earth, our planet. There are multiple planets in the universe. I'm quite positive that scientists will find even more. For us believers, it just adds up to see the greatness of our God. How great is our God. In Luke 1, we are told the story of the angel Gabriel visits to Mary. Gabriel was sent to Mary by God to announce about her conceiving. In verse 34, he asked angel Gabriel this, how can this be since I am a virgin? Verse 35, Gabriel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Church, only God can change the formula of how a woman conceives without a man. He did it with Mary for Jesus to be born without a sin nature. He put a seed into Mary's womb without any procedure, a virgin, and she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then Mary would give birth to Jesus, Son of God, our Lord and Savior. Scientists have, adv have advanced in knowledge, but none of them can speak into existence about anything. Or can have a woman conceive the way God did it with Mary. Only God speaks things into existence. God has the power to do all he wills to do. God is all powerful. And his power is infinite and unlimited. He has both the resources and the ability to work his will in every circumstance in the universe. God is able to do everything we, he needs to do or want to do. God can take the heat. He can take even the heat from the fiery furnaces of our lives, spiritually speaking. So many times we have people who are around us but don't like us. Wished we were dead, but God removes the heat from the fiery furnace and saves us. Daniel chapter 3 tells the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar ordered them to be put in the fiery furnace for their disobedience. For they refused to worship his statue. But God came to their rescue. The only one who can take the heat from a fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar will be amazed to see them walking in there. And could see the fourth person that was the revelation from God. The fourth person with them, who was Jesus. For he could tell that they, he looked like God. He ordered them to come out. So they came out alive and he worshipped the most high God. Church, only God can do this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the furnace not even with a smell of fire on them. Scripture says, God is able to do more than we can imagine. 
Still in the book of Daniel, Darius spent the night wondering if God is able to do it. Daniel in the lion den, in the, in the lion's den, enjoyed the Lord's peace and rest, well knowing that God can. He protected Daniel in the lions. Probably thought he was one of them and did not eat him. Our God is able to save those who stand in truthfulness and honestly serve him. The enemy can try to terrorize us, but our God is able to save us. Job says in verse 1 of chapter 42, he says this, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Job lost everything, you know the story. But God restored everything and he became richer than before. Our God can restore you can restore to you what the devil had stolen from you and bless you even more. The Bible speaks of several miracles testifying of the goodness of, and greatness of our God. Yes, and still is intervening in the lives of many of us here in several ways. Some of you in this very sanctuary, some watching live or listening on the radio were given weeks, months, or a year, but God, but today, you are still alive. Some of you were found to have cancer and the next time you went to, you went for checkup, there was no cancer. Glory be to God. Our God is able. He can do anything according to his will, church. Jesus told, told Martha, he said this, Did I say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Martha was discouraged. By the death of her brother Lazarus, she didn't think she will ever see him alive again, but the Lord Jesus surprised her and the many people present at the scene by bringing Lazarus back to life. Our scripture reading today is a prayer. The apostle Paul prayed for, the God, for that Pray, prayer was that God, by his grace, would strengthen the faith of the believer by the power of the Holy Spirit, that God will enable the believer to love God and love one another, that they would keep God's commandments, living in obedience to Christ, walking with him so that Christ would dwell in their hearts by the agency of the Holy Spirit. Paul, Paul's prayer is that all Christians, you and I included, would comprehend God's love for us as John put it this way, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Church, God is able to help us through every difficulty, decision, or when we don't know what to do. Remember what it says in Mark chapter 10, verse 27. It says, with God, all 
things are possible. What is God able to do? He is able to help you through every situation you found yourself. He is able to heal and deliver. He is able to do above our expectations or imaginations. My niece, happiness, a few days ago celebrated her 12th birthday. My sister Esther, happiness mother, and I were reflecting on what took place that day she gave birth to a baby girl, a second born. To cut the story short, she underwent an emergency C-section. And after the surgery, she wouldn't wake up. Things, are, things work a little bit different in the part of the world where I come from, the Democratic Republic of Congo. A, gynecolo a gynecologist, the only one for the entire clinic at that time was tired. Refused to perform the surgery. It was late around midnight. He was tired and did work a lot that day, he said. The young girl who stayed with my sister at the time and the one who took her to the clinic for her husband was out of town. She went around asking and calling doctors to come and help Esther. One of them accepted to help a young man. The baby was born and she was fine, but the mother couldn't wake up after the surgery. She went in a coma. The doctor did everything in his power for from 1 a.m. to 4. He said he was tired. Esther wouldn't wake up. The doctor was tired and he told Jolie, the young girl, as he left the clinic, that I have done everything in my power. Now I leave it up to God. Esther would open her eyes around 8 a.m. and was able to breathe on her own. And she spoke. She had no idea of what took place. It was a miracle for us. Many prayers were lifted for her and God intervened. July 17 is a day of thanksgiving for God, for what God did in her life. The Lord gave her another chance to live. Our God is a healer. The nurses who were taking, who, who were left to watch over her, were preparing for the worst. But God had something else in mind. He healed her from whatever she suffered from. When my sister woke up, doctors didn't know what went wrong. God healed her. She only had a wound to heal. She had no health issues till now. She's okay. The enemy wanted her dead, but God had a different plan for her. He rescued her. God is able to heal. Glory be to God. God is able to do what man cannot do. God is able, to do, is able to do what man cannot conceive or imagine. He cannot be predicted or limited. He is able to keep us from falling. When the Israelites got to the Red Sea, they could not imagine that God will make a way in the sea. 
Church, no one can stop God's plan. Whatever you are facing in your life today, remember God is able. Think of the times God has delivered you, when he saved you, and the times he moved mountains in your way, in your life. Let the past be your remind, reminder and learn to trust him no matter what. Please share with someone what God has done in your life this week. This will strengthen your faith and of the person you share your testimony with, I pray you do. Let us pray. Father of glory, we thank you for the time. Now, Lord, I ask that you empower your children to share what you have done in their lives, that you will strengthen them, that we we'll continue looking up to you for you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, what we cannot even think or imagine. We ask that you bless us today. Help us, Lord, to leave your words. In the name of Jesus Christ, I give you praise and glory. Amen. Now I will please invite us to stand, if you are able, for the closing hymn. Help me thank Christine for helping us out. She has accepted to lead us in songs. Help me thank her. Thank you. And let's receive the benediction. Now to him who, that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Now I invite us to please sit and enjoy the postlude as Marshall plays.